Hey, what's up? Welcome back to a bonus episode of Taryn Swears. I wanted to come right in before the end of the year and talk about a good, better, best scenario macro edition. Okay. So if you guys are watching live on YouTube, <laughs> you got the real raw Taryn right here. Um, no makeup. Hair's pulled back. Haven't washed my hair in a couple of days. Here it is. <laughs> but as we're talking and setting goals and reflecting on what we accomplished in the year past, or maybe even the years past, uh, wanting to really set ourselves up for success going into the new year. Now, I'm not one for New Year's resolutions. I think it's hokey. I think it's a hallmark mar marketing scheme. Um, and I don't necessarily think that there's a high proven percentage of results of people that follow through with their resolutions, right? I do believe that people set them with great intentions. Like I've done it for so many years. I've set great intentions. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna crush that. I mean, I literally just got a, off the call with my VA marketing and planning what 2023 is gonna look like for us. Now it's not a resolution. It was basically a contractual <laughs> commitment to myself that I, want to accomplish and I need to accomplish in my business in order to continue to serve and be of value to you guys, whether you're listening to this or we decide to work together at some point in the future, but it was a contractual commitment to myself. So this is a good, better, best <laughs> podcast um, on becoming macro-minded. So if you guys have downloaded my free workbook, you can do that on my website or you can go on my Instagram bio and grab it. It's basically a really quick and dirty overview of macronutrients and how you can become macro-minded on your own, right? Like if you're a self-starter and saying, hey, you know what, Taryn, just give me some tools and direction and resources that I can dive into it. Like I need to kind of build myself into something by all means. Right. And so I want to break down how you can leverage this whole process, becoming macro minded on a good, better and best scenario, because I think what we need to remember is that we're all starting somewhere differently. We all have had different exposures and experiences to our own physical journeys, whether you've been in the industry for a while, maybe you are very, very accustomed to working out. You wanna push yourself in the gym. You wanna work on getting some PRs with your lifts, um, or maybe you just wanna be a little bit more consistent with showing up at the gym, right? And if you're gonna show up at the gym and put in the effort there, why the hell wouldn't you do the same with what you feed yourself and nourish yourself? Because it all comes together in like one perfect, beautiful package. And if you're not willing to put the effort in at home that you do with your workouts, when you head to the gym or you go to your class, or maybe you're doing workouts at home, it's such a wasted effort. And I think that we get stuck in that mentality that, oh, well, if I work out, then everything else is okay. I can enjoy my happy hours. I can justify this and justify that, or you know what, I'll just do an extra long workout so I can enjoy my holiday events and, you know, work events or travel or whatever, right? That's such a shitty mentality. And I really want to encourage you guys, if you're going to set a New Year's resolution or that contractual commitment to yourself, release that old bullshit mindset. I've been on this kind of theme on my reels and I've been inspired by, you know, a lot of people that I follow on Instagram, some really fun, you know, snarky accounts. Cause it's really kind of how I roll. I find to, that it, you got to make light of some of this stuff, right? Like you can read all those boring journals and, you know, articles on nutrition and fitness, but sometimes you just need like to get bitch slaps really into reality of, oh my God, I can't do that and justify that anymore. It doesn't work like that. Right. Especially as you get older. Your hormones take into consideration your age, your metabolism changes significantly because of those two things alone. Your age and your hormones affects your metabolism exponentially. So, but all's not lost and, you know, don't use that as an excuse. And that was one of my big things is that we tend to use our age, our hormones, our genetics, all as an excuse as to why we can't 
drop the body fat that we wanted to, why we can't build lean muscle. Like all of that is bullshit. Okay. So this is your contractual commitment to yourself. I hope I'm hoping I'm inspiring you here. And if you could see my hands flying around, then you would know. (laughs) Those of you that know me in person know that like I talk with my hands when I'm leading a class, explaining the workout, like I am super passionate with my hands and my voice. So if you're listening um, on, you know, your favorite podcast um, outlet, then just imagine my hands flailing around. Okay. Unless you're watching on YouTube, you get to see them. (laughs) Um, But allow this to be your contractual commitment to yourself to finally allow the evolution of your journey and to let go any of that bullshit stuff that you allowed yourself to justify in, you know, this year or in years past or whatever, right? Because that's really what it is. Like everybody has the ability to make physical adjustments in their health. And if there are things that you are doing and you are dotting every I and crossing every T that every fitness professional or your dietitian or functional medical practitioner has told you to do, but nothing's working, then there's something going on internally. Well, there's one of two things, either you're lying to yourself and you're not doing the work that you said you're doing, right? Like maybe you show up to your workout, but yeah, you know, you take a sip of water, you walk around, you cut out some of the reps or, you know, if it's a, um, a workout where there's a timing and you stop, you know, 15 seconds to go because, you know, that was enough for me. You know, like, you know, you're half-assing your workout, right? You know that you're not necessarily following something nutritionally or eating clean, But again, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what does eating clean mean? And then as long as you have a very clear definition and boundary on what eating clean is, great. But what is it, right? Is it eating just greens and vegetables and, you know, one ingredient foods? Is it (laughs) bleaching your food because it's clean? Like, You know, like what does eating clean mean? I know it's super snarky, but it's really kind of like relevant. Like what is eating clean? Like I love when clients come to me. Well, I have a fitness regimen, which is great. I love that people do. Um, And I eat really clean, but I'm not getting results. I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about what does eating clean even mean to you? Because I guarantee we have a very different interpretation of it. But I'm also very aware that everybody's version is different and that's okay. And that's why I want to get into this good, better, best in regards to establishing the most appropriate macro journey for you wherever you're at right now, okay? Because this is something that you could stop, drop, and do right now, all right? But you have to acknowledge where you're at and be honest in the process and define what those things are to you right now. So even if that means just doing a brain dump on a piece of paper so you can go, okay, well, this is what I know I'm doing, right? And this is where I want to go. So what is that path from A to B, or maybe it's A to Z, because there might be a lot of twists and turns and, you know, zigzags and, you know, all different paths and things that pop up. So it might be an A to Z journey and that's okay. So we're going to talk through some of that and also give yourself some grace that that's okay too. Okay. So let's dive in talking about your good, better, best on your own macro journey. I'm becoming macro minded. So if you haven't go to my website, go on my Instagram, which is at Taryn Perry and download the macro minded guide. It's free. It is so robust in like, but very comprehensible too. Like it's not one of those, like, you need a doctorate to understand it. Cause you know what? I don't have one. Um, but I've done a shitload of research. You guys know, I've been in this game for a very, very long time. I've been a fitness trainer for 14 years and I've been in nutrition for 10, and I've studied every angle of nutrition, both personally and also professionally in my studies and my research and my certifications. I've got like, you know, four different dialects of nutrition certifications, but I come at it from a holistic perspective in that everybody has a holistic, authentic journey that they need to go about in order to make it custom to their own. If anyone tells you that there is a one way program like this is a one size fits all you know if somebody's claiming to have that for you run <laughs> there is not a one size fits all program for anybody right because we're all wired differently we all have different backgrounds to food we all have different budgets and cultures and interests 
And none of it should be told that that's irrelevant because it is totally relevant to the process. You have to own where you've come from in your background, in your history of nutrition, like your upbringing, like what did your parents teach you about food, if anything, or what was the relationship that you had on an early age with nutrition? What were your parents' relationship with food? That matters because that was a learned behavior, right? So whatever they bought and put on the table for you to consume is what you deemed to be healthy for your body. Maybe you didn't even know what healthy meant, but you felt you trusted what they were putting in front of you. Whether that was a box of pizza from Domino's or that was a four course meal. That's what you knew growing up as a adequate nutrition. That's what was giving you food. That was what was keeping you energized. That's all you knew. So that matters in this whole experience. And I think we forget And not to mention as we get older and other influences that come into our life that either teach us the right or wrong way about diet, right? Social media, television, celebrities, like all of that stuff gets influenced. I mean, how many of us, I'm in, I'm 44. So how many of us have gone through like five different diet cycles, right? There was a no fat trend, low fat trend, no sugar trend, um, Atkins, paleo, keto, low carb, high carb, low calories, no calories. Let's fast for 48 hours and drink water, which is absolutely insane in my opinion. And you know what? If that's your thing, great. That is not my thing. I will not be one. I can't say never say never, but chances of finding me fasting for 48 hours and drinking only water is like slim to none. And you you know, you might want to go get a lottery ticket. (laughs) If you find me doing that, I love food. And I do think that food is such a, a, it's just such a personal thing, you know? And so when we try and disbar food from being anything but something that's nourishing and joyful and intentional, then we're doing ourselves a disservice and we're almost putting this negative association to food, which a lot of us had for many years because we learned it from our parents, from uh, family members, celebrities, social media, you know, all of those influences started to create these patterns as we got older. And those patterns got really, really hard to unwind. And so that's why I'm really passionate about it because I want to unwind all those bullshit things that we taught ourselves or that we learned to think that we had good intentions of, you know, learning and understanding and applying because we thought it was the right thing to do because experts told us, right? And same with this whole clean living and clean eating, like there needs to be a very like definitive um, definition to that. Like, what does that even mean? And how is that applicable to you? Okay, so let's talk about the good, better, best when it comes to macros. Let's talk about the good, all right? So good is just tracking, like just start tracking something. And you literally can do that the moment you hang up from listening to this podcast. Listen through it all because I hope that you'll create this, these phases, this evolution in this process for yourself, okay? Because I'm not going to teach you how, like exactly what to eat. You get to decide. I'm just going to encourage you how to create the patterns, the foundation for yourself so you can start being successful. Because I guarantee the biggest missing link for most people is they don't even truly understand what they're eating every day. They're eating, but they don't know exactly. If I said, hey, tell me what you ate today. Well, I ate, shoot, what did I have for breakfast? Um, I think I had a smoothie. What'd you put in your smoothie? Um, Some fruit, some milk, you know, protein powder you know, come to find out the smoothie was like 100 calories or it was like a 600 calorie smoothie, right? And again, I'm not one to talk about calories, but starting out just tracking, writing down anything and everything you eat, you eat, excuse me, is a good way to start because that brings awareness to actually what you're consuming. You have to be a data collector, right? This whole process is about you collecting information that your body's giving you feedback on because when you eat something your body is giving you a response whether you like it or not you're getting a response energetically how you sleep 
your waistline, whether your pants go on well that day or not, because maybe something you ate created an inflammatory response. Maybe over time, it's adding more volume to your waistline than you like. Maybe it's taking away volume from your waistline. You know, maybe you're getting stronger in your workouts, you're finding you're able to lift stronger. And so you get to go back and go, whoa, what am I eating that's allowing that to happen, right? So start tracking and becoming aware of your food. Log it. There are so many great free fitness apps out there. I personally use MyFitnessPal. I subscribe to their annual um, membership, which gives you more more tools within the app to use because you can truly get an accurate assessment of your macronutrients and you can set them accordingly. Now, I will say I don't trust MyFitnessPal to set your macros for you. It is generally, uh, MyFitnessPal has been a um, an app based off calories. So when it started, I think it's been around for about 14, 15 years now, it was a calorically based app. So it was tracking how many calories you consumed. So if you have the free version, you could probably go and look and say, oh yeah, it has me starting at 1300 calories. And then it has that plus or minus up at the top because it includes your workout, right? So I don't include any of that. I don't want anyone to include their workouts when they're tracking their food. And I'll add that as we get through the um, better and best modality here. But with the good, we're just starting to track your food. Don't worry or pay attention about the calories or the macros just start tracking okay and if putting it into an app is overwhelming to you get out a notebook and pen and write it down get out your notes section in your phone there literally should be no reason or excuses as to why you can't track something and you know what if you're busy and you travel for your job you're in the car a lot or what have you and you don't remember to write it down take a picture All right, take a picture of your food. You guys follow me on Instagram. You probably see that I post a lot of my food. They're very basic and they're very repetitive because, you know, I'm pretty simple. I'm not going to come at you saying that I'm gourmet in any sense of the word. Like if I could put a meal together in 20 minutes, guaranteed any single meal that I consume, it's been prepared in 20 minutes or less, unless it's in the crock pot, but like the prep of it, right? So my breakfast, you know, I'm very consistent and, you know, I alternate between two or three things and they change seasonally because my interests, you know, change. So take a picture. If you don't have the time to sit and write it down or log it in, you can go back and check. However, the picture has to be very telling to remember if you made a smoothie, exactly what you put into it. All right. So, you know, it takes an extra two minutes, log it in the app as you're making it, as you're blending it, as you're heating it up, whatever. Okay. So good tracking and logging. All right, let's move into better. Now, if you've already tracked and logged your food, you're like, okay, I've been writing it down for two weeks. I'm feeling really good about it. Then you are going to layer it on. This is your better approach to it. Focusing on elements of the macronutrients. And so where I start with clients, hands down is prioritizing your protein because it's the building block for basically every outcome that you want, right? And most want to drop body fat and build lean muscle. If you aren't consuming adequate amount of proteins that is suitable for your body, then that's going to be a very, very hard physical accomplishment. So start prioritizing your protein. So if you've been tracking and logging and getting really accustomed to that and starting to become aware of the foods you're eating, start prioritizing and understanding how much protein your body needs. We'll do, we'll fill in the blanks later. And, you know, again, I'm talking about something that's just starting out on understanding their macros. If you've done this before, your better might be really dialing in your protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Okay. So this is really just kind of starting out or reacquainting yourself with this whole process. I really encourage you as part of the better solution when you're getting started and your macro journey is to know how many in general grams of protein your body needs, all right? So if you're just starting, you can take, and you're in pretty decent shape, you know, you're happy with your weight, you're gonna be about one gram of protein per pound of body weight currently. That is if you're consistent in the gym, you like, you know, the size of clothes that you're wearing, you feel pretty good, but you wanna lean out a little bit and maybe drop some body fat, then a general 
calculation could be one gram of protein per pound of current body weight. If you are overweight and you want to drop some body fat while building lean muscle, then you might find that you're going to do about 0.8 to 0.9 grams per pound of current body weight. These are just general numbers, okay? So don't, you know, like, oh, Taryn said, and I haven't seen shit, you know, like, you got to go through my course if you really want to get, you know, down and dirty, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so understanding your, your protein calculations, and you can go online and probably find any calculator. If you go and downloaded my guidebook, you're going to have a built-in interactive calculator that's going to basically spit out all your macros for you. So there's that. Um, but you also need to know what is appropriate for what you want, right? So what I really caution when people go and set their own macros is to be realistic to the process. Yes, you maybe want to lose five or 10 pounds. And so people mod automatically go and cut their protein down so significantly thinking the lower that is, the quicker the results are going to be, which is not how it works, right? I mean, short term, sure. Any drastic change you have in your diet is going to produce significant results probably rather rather quickly, but it's not sustainable, right? And it doesn't really set that realistic standard for, hey, you know, weight loss, healthy weight loss, sustainable weight loss is about half a pound a week, in my opinion, half a pound to a pound, depending how much weight you have to lose. So that's always the caveat, right? Now, someone that has anywhere from five to 15 pounds, half a pound of body weight per week is not much, but it's sustainable and you will, chances are, you'll have a high percentage of maintaining that, those results and keeping with them and building on them over a longer period of time if you are realistic in that weight loss. And as a woman, guess what? We're not static in our weight, so you're not going to see, you know, a static weight loss every single week. You're going to see those ebbs and flows because we're not designed to have the same weight every single day, every single month. We're just not, right? We have hormones. So as you get into menopause, so if you're a menopause um, or had a hysterectomy and you don't have natural hormones ebbing and flowing in your body, then you might find that your weight's a little bit more static and easy to manage, which in fact, fun fact, um, a lot of scientific data out there was done on menopausal women, women that had gone through the process of menopause because they were able to be more static. That is when they did bring women into these um, data points, when they, they primarily had done all these research um, dietary measures on men because men don't have the influx of hormones with their cycle like women do. Obviously, they don't have their infradium rhythm to take into consideration. So they weren't cycling, right? Men don't have a period, women do. So men were easier to run all these dietary research and data points through because they could produce predictable results. Same with menopause women that have gone through menopause postmenopausal women because they were very static much like the men so those of us that are still in our cycle and, and may or maybe perimenopause you're going to have a influx or a, an ebb and flow of your weight that's just part of the process so suck it up sister okay so but once you can dial in how much protein that your body needs to be consuming that's your better phase that you can be in like just understanding your protein and you're going to find that you're naturally going to consume the fats and carbohydrates that you need but if you focus on your protein and just start adding extra protein in your meals for you know a, a week or two adding a little bit every two weeks if you're consuming you know when you go through the first phase and you start tracking and logging and you go huh i'm only having 40 60 grams of protein a day and then you do your calculation, go, shit, I'm supposed to be eating 100 grams. Do you think you should go from 60 to 150 overnight? Like, no, not even in a week. Like, that might take you a good six to eight weeks to build up to what those protein amounts need to be. Okay. But that's like, that's when you really graduate and evolve. So don't worry about that yet. Just prioritize your protein. So, what I mean by that is when you prepare your meal or you're kind of masterminding what you're going to consume through the day, focusing on what your protein source is going to be at each and every meal. Know that it should be, depending on your body weight, so caveat, 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 anywhere between 20 grams to 35 grams of protein per meal. And that's just a huge range based on where you're at physically, okay? So 
you are lower weight on the scale, then you're probably going to find that you don't need to eat as much protein and also depends on your physical activity. If you're in the gym two hours a day, obviously your protein amounts are going to be a little bit more elevated and required for your body. But then again, you know, hopefully you've got a little bit better handle on your macros by now if you are that physically active in the gym, right? So I'm just talking to the person that's going and showing up their workout each day, wanting to get stronger, wanting to really get a handle on their nutrition, prioritize your protein. Okay, so breakfast, figure out what your protein source is going to be first. And lunch, what's your protein source going to be first? And then you can kind of fill it in with any extras, vegetables, carbohydrates, fats, and dinner as well. What's your main protein source going to be? And then fill the rest with your vegetables, your healthy fats, and such. Okay, so that's really going to be your better option when you're working, becoming macro-minded. All right, now let's talk about your best. The best thing you can do is to truly understand how to set your macros. And again, I told you my calculator on my Become Macro Minded Guidebook can set them for you as long as you know how to set that baseline for yourself and be really realistic, okay? The best option is to work with somebody that knows their shit, okay? I have a course that's eight weeks that I will be opening up enrollment for. I will have a link here in the show notes so you can get yourself first in line on the wait list so you can join the the course that opens actually January 23rd. It'll be eight weeks and it takes you through the nuts and bolts and helps you understand everything and anything there is about macronutrients, the why, the how, and also to be able to set your own macros and know when you need to adjust them. So have your macros fully understood for yourself and what your own needs are and track them diligently for six weeks. Those set macros, not this week I'm gonna eat this and then this week I'm gonna eat that. And well, I tracked them for three days and then I didn't track them for two. So yeah, I'm not seeing results, but I've been tracking them for six weeks, right? I'm using air quotes, picture my air quote fingers. If you're tracking here and there for six weeks and wondering why you're not getting results, that's the problem, okay? So if you are in this best version of the process, you should be diligent, diligently tracking your macros for at least six weeks to get a handle on how your body's responding to those set macros. Because I don't care who the professional is out there, right? Like somebody that's been in the industry for 30 years can set your macros and your body takes eight weeks to respond your body takes four weeks to respond. You are the one that has to be taking in the information, taking the feedback that your body is producing as you're consuming that information, and that's your food, that's your nourishment, but also your workouts, your sleep, your hydration, your environmental influences, like those become part of the process as well. If you're not diligent for six weeks at least, taking in all of that data, it's going to be really hard to understand that those set macros work for you because you aren't necessarily following them. So following your set macros for your body, not mine, not your best friends, not your workout buddy, not your spouses, for sure not your spouses, and for sure not your coworkers, best friends, cousins macros, yours, because you are designed differently our DNA, our genetics, our culture, our budget, our interests, our palates, they're different, right? Your medical needs, like I might tell you, hey, go eat salmon, it's a great source of protein. And you might go, oh my God, I'm definitely allergic to salmon or it makes me gag, right? Like I made a funny post about that, like the foods that you shouldn't eat, foods that you're allergic to, foods that are expired and spoiled, foods that make you gag. Like really, you shouldn't, it's dumb. You have to be able to enjoy this process. You have to be able to make your meal plan, your macro-based meal plan, because you're in the gym working out, right? Like these are for my folks that are, you know, pushing themselves in the gym and wanting to see that performance transition in their body physically. They want to see the fruits of their labor produce the results. When they look in the mirror, they step on the Embody scan and go, damn, I build, I put on five pounds of lean muscle and I dropped 2% body fat it's working. Or, huh, I went up in body fat and down in lean muscle. What the hell happened? Right? 
I want you to be able to see the fruits of your labor because you're consuming the energetic foods that your body needs to produce those results. So that's your best scenario there in becoming macro-minded. So what did we just go over? Our good setting, or excuse me, our good is tracking and logging your food. Just getting your bearings of understanding what the hell you're eating. That is your good. Just get started writing it down, become knowledgeable, become aware, okay? Your better is focusing on your protein. Prioritize your protein with each and every meal. You're still tracking and logging, right? You might be using MyFitnessPal, you might be using Macros First, that's another app. Um, you might be using your phone or notes, just prioritize your protein and take inventory of how much protein you're consuming. If you're having yogurt in the morning, how much yogurt are you having? Have you looked at the nutritional label to see, okay, if I have half a cup of yogurt, how much protein does that yield? If I'm winging it and just throwing it in a bowl and eyeballing it, like, do you have any idea? Might be a good idea to get a food scale, okay? But as you're looking for these protein sources, I also wanna put on that holistic hat, be aware of where it's coming from and what's in it. So just because it touts, you know, packed with protein, cereal, like maybe not the best choice, but again, this is your journey. That might be your version of better right now until you learn and you start being able to kind of go, okay, you know what, maybe I want to try and evolve from the cereal into a protein shake, but I need to find the right protein shake or I'm going to make eggs, whatever, right? So prioritize your protein. Your best solution is to set your macros in their entirety or hire somebody to do them and work with them. Seriously, if you're frustrated going to the gym, pushing yourself, hitting the streets, running, doing all the good things, with good intentions, but not seeing results, hire somebody, invest the money into somebody that knows their shit and can help you identify that missing link or where you need to make up with what you're not doing and can see that right out of the gates and go, oh, I know what you're not doing. Or help you know you dissect and be a team. They wanna be a partner. Like I wanna partner with you to help you build the best custom macro-minded meal plan that you are going to fall in love with and you're going to find to ease to roll into your lifestyle. I don't want to make your life difficult and and nobody should be trying to tell to sell you on a plan that is miserable. Like teaching you to eat bird seed and rabbit food. Like gross and lame and not enjoyable. <laughs> right? Like you don't need to eat rabbit seed and, or rabbit food and bird seed in order to be successful. Like you should be able to eat the things that you like. And that, you know, still help you get results, but you might have to make some concessions. So that's my other caveat for that. Anyways, so that's what I got. I do hope that this was helpful and inspires you to start out somewhere along those lines and also applying what that good, better, best method could be to where you're at. Because there's always a way to scale it depending on where you're at. And if you need help, hit me up. But you know what? Hop on my wait list. Get to be the first notified when our enrollment opens for our next Become Macro Minded course. It'll be eight weeks. It's going to start January 23rd. I'm telling you, you guys are going to get outfitted beyond uh, nutritionally. You're going to have a very good understanding of how you can reach that performance level based on your set macronutrition. I walk you through all the very basics and help you become very well in tune and efficient to the process so you feel like you can carry on and go about your merry way all by yourself. So be on the lookout for that. But you know what? Just start somewhere. Just start somewhere. Basic, whatever you need, and start after you finish listening to this. Do not wait until January 1st. Do not wait until after your holiday party. Do not wait until you get back from vacation. Like start with your next meal. Just become aware. It's not that hard just become aware. I had five drinks. Holy shit. I had five cocktails. Wow. And I ate 14 cookies. Okay. That was a little excessive. I could probably pair that back. Um, and I felt like shit the next day. So then I went and had Chick-fil-A for breakfast. Huh? Okay. So now I'm seeing a theme here, right? Like super sarcastic, but maybe not too far from the truth for some, right? No judgment, but it's your journey. So you're the one that gets to judge your own. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to encourage and, you know, slap you around a little bit because you're frustrated. 
right? I don't want you to be frustrated in this process. I do want to be an advocate right alongside of you guys and encourage you to feel super motivated and confident about the process. So go grab my workbook. It's totally free. I'm not going to try and sell you on any nonsense, but I do really encourage you guys to make that contractual commitment to yourself to make a change if you didn't get what you needed out of this last few weeks, out of this last year, two years, whatever, it's time for a change. You're not getting any younger. You're not. And you know what? Results aren't just going to happen because you decide to get up one day. Like you got to put the action in play. Okay. You guys got this though. I know you do. Thank you so much for listening. I'm honored. It just hypes me up. Again, here's my hands. Hypes me up to know that I get to be in your ear. I get to be, you know, your drive time university or while you're cleaning the dishes or folding laundry, it really truly means the world to me. So thank you so much. And if you liked what I shared today and want to pass it on to somebody, I would be honored if you screenshot this podcast episode, shared it on your stories, tag me. I would love it because I want to connect with you. I want to connect with your friends and see how I can help you guys resolve what you need. So you can, uh, I could be alongside of that contractual commitment to yourself. All right, deal. All right, cool. You guys have an awesome rest of your day and I look forward to working with you soon. Bye.